Okay guys, to preface this one, if, you, if you're new to the channel and this is the very first video you've ever watched by us, we are not anti-gay or transgender or anything like that. Right. I mean, I mean, <laughs> look at the two people talking here. <laughs> but right. we have had some, well, I say some, but one really crappy experience with Pride Fest here, yeah. in, no here in the Knoxville area. So take yeah. it away, Hushcho. <laughs> See, the thing about it is, if you know me, you know I've been working for like well over a decade in... Um, is, and especially in like gay erotica and things like that. And I'm a, I'm a ride or die bitch. I'm a staunch supporter against censorship, for equal rights, all this stuff. So I thought, yeah, year, this was years ago. This was at least like three or Thor, three or Thor. Yes, three or Thor. <laughs> three or Thor, maybe Loki. I'm a you know. thunderer. God damn it! I'll thunder <laughs> when I want to. <laughs> but, um... Anyway, so this was this was a, a few years ago when I was still doing uh, shows, and it was one of the things that kind of led me to stop doing quite so many. And uh, honestly, I think it was one of it really was one of the last ones that I really did, because like we did that, and then um, the other show that we were doing, you know, they had to stop doing it, and yeah. nothing nothing really ever took its its place, and I just started doing less and less. I think. I think it was at the end of uh, that year that uh, we had our terrible experience at the con that shall not be named. But anyway, I thought, well, at the time I was trying to get into as many shows as I could, you know, and I thought this would be an especially good show because mm -hmm. most of the conventions that I go to, I don't really sell. A, I, I didn't really sell a lot, you know, because my stuff is kind of specific. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, is it, you know. You get a lot of people coming to these shows that want to buy, you know, general audience stuff or, or whatnot. I, I still did okay with like sketches and stuff like that, but toting all the stuff to to and from shows that didn't sell, you know, because it, yeah. was, it was very specific, it was kind of a kind of a pain. But uh, anyway, so I thought, well, I've I've heard they're doing a, a Pride Fest and and everything locally, so I contacted them and said, uh, look, I'd really like to support your pride fest i'm i'm local to the area i do a lot of stuff i actually have a pretty sizable following for my work i've been doing it for many years i've, I've got this stuff to sell and etc and uh you know i i was i was going to negotiate I, I said you know i would be happy to contribute to your it was something called like art out in the city or something where they where they got donated published books and art and mm -hmm various things for their auction to raise funds for their for their festival and, and group and whatever. So uh, I contributed some comics and some signed comics and I think an art book. And, you know, I, I said I would uh, go to their little auction get-together thingy. And then I, uh, you know, we were supposed to do the uh, the Pride Fest, which it's... It's at this square downtown. It's a really nice place, and I had I generally kind of steered clear of of uh, outdoor stuff because you really don't know what the weather's going to do. But see, I was told that it would be in a place where I wouldn't have to worry about it. You know, they'd have a they'd have a tent, so I wouldn't have to worry about if it rained or something like that. So, like, it was a couple of days before they didn't actually. Well, first of all, at the uh, auction, they way ramped up the price on the uh, on the, the stuff I donated, and I was like, "Well, okay, but you know, like it, this is not this is not really that rare or that expensive." But I thought, well, you know, whatever. If they want to do it, you know, maybe it's for a good cause and everything. So I thought, you know, I thought, thought it was weird, but it didn't really occur to me that it was, you know, a bad kind of weird. So then I get I get this map that they've planned out, and I see that I am next. I'm I'm out in the open for one. You know, not this, with the this map, not, by the way, was given to him that night before we were supposed to go. Yeah, yeah, and I was thinking they waited until now and said, you know, this is how it is. You know, we can't really switch it around. And I'm thinking, you wait until the last fucking night before the damn thing to tell us where we're going to be. And you put, they not only put me out in the open away from, away from the row of uh, tables with tents, 
but they also put me next to a fucking dunk tank. Yes, and a I dunking like, booth. Comic books next to a dunking booth. Yeah, I was like, I've got books, I've got art. Pretty much everything that I'm going to be taking to this will be destroyed if that splashes anywhere near my table. So I was like, I was thinking, you know, I, I will I will write them. I will say, you know, you, you just made a little mistake. I just need this to be fixed. Well, he wasn't he wasn't willing to to do anything, and I was just about ready to cancel. I should have cancelled, but I got a friend of mine who is a very persuasive person, very good at that, to call him. And the guy he got the guy to promise me that the table would be where it was originally supposed to be. You know, he put me in right right in the uh, the tent lineup. You know, nowhere near the dunking booth. So we go there. And it's already ridiculous. It's, we already have to practically park on the top of the damn parking garage. Yeah, it took like forever to find a place to park. But thankfully, we parked right next to the elevator. So that yeah. was a small blessing. Yeah, it's a small blessing. A slightly tarnished silver lining. But, yeah. yeah so, we, so we carried all of our stuff. And this was actually kind of a significant amount to carry. We had some pretty heavy boxes. Yeah. But we went, we went, down, we went down the uh, elevator... And we were met with someone who didn't know anything and needed to talk to this other guy. So we spent all this time trying to track down the fucker that was supposed to be in charge. I finally get the asshole and he's constantly like, he won't even like no eye contact, always trying to get away. So he finally begs off and he's like, okay, we'll get this, we'll get this sorted. Cause I didn't know where we were going to be because there was someone there where I was supposed to be. Yeah, because basically uh, what happens is it we talk to like two different guys, and then Hushcha is like, well, instead of you lugging all this crap around, why don't I, we just put it all down, and you stay with it while I go find dudes. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. Of course, it's still like, what, 90-something degrees? Yeah, it's, it, it's very hot. It was very hot. It was already so, like, like uh, at least in the 80s, yeah. if not... So, not in the and so Hushcho is leaves me alone for a little bit, and I'm just standing there looking around. And I'm like, well, once we find our table, we'll be able to put all this crap there and uh, have chairs, and we're supposed to get some bottled water, and everything will be good once we just figure out where our table is. And yeah, they kept and trying see, to tell Hushcho that he was still next to the dunking booth. Yeah, because we had gone to the place where they told, you know, where my friend was told that was where it was going to be, and there was some asshole in the place, and apparently they didn't, they had no clue as to... Yeah, as so, to... so when his show came back to me, I, ju I just looked at him, and he didn't look too happy, and I'm like, I had a bad feeling about this, and as soon as yeah. the words came out of his mouth, my... He's like, they gave away our table. My my next reaction, but I was able to, t to, you know, keep it to myself because there was a church booth right next to me, and I didn't want to offend them by suddenly sprouting foul language. <laughs> but my reaction basically was, we'll tell them to fucking move their shit. That's our yeah. table. Yeah, I was I was absolutely just exasperated because these assholes were in the way we didn't have any fucking chairs we had we kept having to tell people to get us chairs we had to tell i think we had to tell five people yeah we were there for at least an hour well, basically what it ended up happening is who show finally found uh i don't know if it was the same guy or another guy but no it was another guy I never... to to send us to where there was a spot open which, again, was around the dunking booth. So we weren't next yeah. to it, but we were a table over from it. So we were still around the fucking dunking booth. Now, see, the, th the thing is, is that I talked to five different people, and they all begged off and, and basically ran off with their tails between their legs. They would, nobody would give me straight answer. <laughs> nobody would give us any chairs. And Cassie has bad knees. So, I mean, imagine this. You know, imagine having to stand up. We stood for, an for like an hour, because when they gave us our spot, we didn't have a table or chairs. We didn't have either of those, so we couldn't even set up. And they were already letting people in when they shouldn't have, because we still had, what, like an hour or something? And people were uh -huh. shopping. And the thing hadn't even started yet, and people are walking around shopping. Yeah. And then, so maybe 30 minutes after we finally get there under a tree, 
we get a table, and then we're like, we still need water and chairs. And the dude's yeah, like, which, okay. And yeah, which had been promised to us. Yeah, yeah. We, never, we never saw the same person twice. <laughs> These people all ran off. None of them came back. I think I saw one person twice, but yeah. that was it. Never three times. The people that, that came around, you know, we, we had to basically set up everything ourselves and we were not a priority. We were treated like crap. The guy lied to us. And, and see, the thing about it is, is that we were at the same table. We weren't even a table over. We were at exactly the same place that they'd said on that map. What it was that? not. I thought you were right next to the donkey booth. And then when we got there, they'd actually put like a snow cone person there. No, see, we were originally right by the dunking booth and we ended up right by the dunking booth yeah, well, he promised me yeah. that i would be moved into the line of with the the tents and the and the cover because i said i literally cannot be there yeah if you are not going to do this because i cannot take the chance that it'll rain or this dunking yeah. booth will splash on me this uh, you know yeah. one one splash and that's like a hundred bucks worth of yeah yeah uh, and, they're, and they're not going to pay me for that. Yeah, I know. that They don't give it two shits. But what I meant was I thought they just... Like, we were still around the dunking booth, but I thought they had us at that table where the snow cones were, and then in the end, they just moved us a table to the left, is what I meant. And that no, was about no, we as, were, as good as we got. We were pretty much right there. I, I had wanted to switch with the other table that was further away, but it didn't end up happening that way. But anyway, so we sat there for a while. We were there for a couple of hours, maybe. Yeah, after an hour, I finally went and found some people I thought maybe were con staff, well, not con staff, but fest staff. And I'm like, dudes, we we need two, we need two chairs because we've been waiting for like an hour, hour and a half for chairs, and we have never got any chairs. And, there, and then she's like, what number are you? And I'm like, number? The tables are fucking numbered? I don't know. They put us under a fucking tree next to the fucking ducking booth. What do you mean they're numbered? Yeah. And it's not like they were using the numbers. They were so disorganized. It, I have seen things living on the bottom of ponds with better organizational skills the than these people. The flea market at the drive-in at least has numbers. Numbers I can clearly see. Yeah. So I know where to go. When yeah, they I'm... were just basically the whole thing was them just pulling shit out of their asses and using it to try and deflect any sort of <laughs> any sort of questions, any sort of needs, any sort of requests. You never saw the same people twice. You never, if you talked to someone or asked them about something, oh, they had to ask someone. They had to ask this dude, and this dude was the dude that had lied to not only me but also a bunch of other people. Like I found out afterwards that. Our treatment was pretty much how almost everyone was treated. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, so you need to not support these assholes if that is how they're going to treat you. Because this, this is not appropriate and this is not acceptable. Mm -mm. But, I mean, we left after, after a couple of hours and well, I, don't, I don't regret it at all. You got pooped on by a bird. Yeah, I got, I got, that, that was like maybe the most funniest thing that happened. But at that point... I was just like, yeah, that's to be expected. I, I yeah. got shit on by a bird. Yeah, Cassie got shit on by a bird. And then it started to rain. We actually barely got out of there we'll before it started to fucking <laughs> rain. And, I, you know, we were just like, you know, we were just like, you know, yeah. this sucks. Let's yeah. just leave. We're going to go to the Asian well, well, buffet. We and yeah. Well, we did try to hang out. Like, okay, maybe we can make Kush Cho's money back for the table. We can at least do that. Then we can just say fuck it and leave. Yeah. Well, but, see, fortunately, fortunately, I didn't actually pay for a table. I, yeah. I, I worked out that I was going to just, you know, donate to their auction, and I thought, you know, this is this is great. You know, uh, I'll donate to their auction, support them. You know, I'll, I'll scratch my back. You know, or I'll scratch your back. You scratch mine. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, like, seriously, I am so glad I did not pay for the table but we were going to try and make something out of it because i thought this is going to be the perfect venue people will be supportive this is exactly what the sort of thing that they would want you know this is the yeah. this is the crowd this is the audience that i have online this is the audience that i know will like what i'm doing 
I don't even think we sold. I, we sold a little bit. Yeah, but... I, th I think you made the cost of the table, and that was it. I think you yeah. broke even, is what it was. <clears throat> yeah, which you know, at least I didn't actually pay any money. But yeah. if I had, I would have. I would have broken even. So that that was fine. But yeah, we we went and and decided to have a Asian buffet, but. You know, afterwards, I I wrote an email, and see, they had they had sent an email around to all these people, so I had all their email addresses, yeah. and I wrote and I told them what had happened, and I said, please don't support these people, and and see, the thing about it is, it's a shame because, and I don't know if, if it's under different management today, which would be great if it if it were. Yeah, I mean, I can't like, speak for Pride Fest before that one and the Pride Fest after that one. But considering everything that happened during that one and how we were treated, and on top of the fact that the the guys on the bicycles running advertisements wouldn't, like, get the fuck out of the way so people could come to the table, and the music yeah. was shit, and fuck that woman who was yelling period all the fucking time, I wanted yeah. to go and punch her in the face. Yeah, it was, it was horrible, because the whole, the way it was set up, it was just so disorganized, it was so awful. And so horribly set up that it was basically almost impossible for anybody coming through to see us and to find us, plus that fucking dunking booth on the on the side of us, which which did actually splash us, and that was about yeah, when I, I was just the, like, that, like one ball rolled over, but I was so hot and miserable, and the only thing the only thing we ever got to drink, they never did bring us water. The only thing we got to yeah. drink was like I think that. Dr. Pepper you brought, and I drank yeah. that, and then I got pooped on. Yeah, we we basically, we were basically left to be dehydrated in higher than 90 degree temperatures. We we actually did have our stuff splashed by the uh, dunking tank. Fortunately, it was not enough to do any damage, and I got to it immediately. It, um, it only got the books that had the uh, perfect binding, so I mean, it didn't soak in or anything, and I I wiped it off. But it and it wasn't really enough to you know like do anything. But it was still yeah. splash, and I knew it was going to happen. And that was about when I was just like, okay, I've just about had enough. But yeah, it was it was awful. The crowd wasn't buying. It was it was horribly disorganized. The people were liars. The, the the organizers were absolutely liars, cheats, and frauds, and I I will never ever go to this go to this thing again. And I don't care if it's in different hands or what. But the thing that, that pisses me off about it, though, and, and and you know, after I after I sent that mail, I actually got you know got in touch with some of the people that were there, and and several of the other artists were like, yeah, I had the same experience. And I'm just like, okay, so don't fucking do it again. You know, you don't do it again. Yeah. If the same people are there, you don't fucking do it again. It's stupid. And, you know, I don't care if it is supposedly, you know, to to further the, the cause or further awareness. It doesn't do anything but make a bad name for your cause or your people. And that is not good for the cause or awareness. All that makes people is aware that you are a dick. And it doesn't make people want to actually support you. It makes people want to do the opposite. It makes people want to avoid you. But one of the funniest things that I got from this was from the little... Oh, God, he was a moron. The, the, the dude that was in charge of doing the, uh, the art out in the city, which I've kind of started to call fart out in the city. I don't know if they're even still doing it anymore. I can't imagine so, because I think that I think that he may have expended his one brain cell. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, if it was as shittily run as the Pride Fest was, anything with the Pride Fest, I mean, like, <laughs> these guys had no intelligence. You you would think people running a show of any kind, rather it's for Pride or anime or just a bunch of people wanting to get together because they have something awesome in common, you know, would have a brain cell to know how to run this shit. But and, they were and, malicious yeah. and greedy. And, and, stu and, and stuff is going to go wrong sometimes. Sometimes it's going to go horribly wrong, even if you are competent. But the yeah. thing is, there's a, a difference between obviously trying to help and support people and then just bo giving them two middle fingers and telling them they can go fuck themselves with something sharp and pointy and hope they get tetanus. 
Yeah, I mean, they were they were literally malicious, and they attacked me afterwards. Like after I sent this email around, someone was actually claiming, and this is funny because this has become a running gag with another friend of mine. Someone was like, "Obviously, you hate equality," and I'm like, "Yeah, about that." <laughs> Yes, because having a terrible experience that had nothing to do with being gay or anything, except the fact that I was there for Pride Fest. That's the only. That's the only thing this has in common with what you're trying to say. But it still makes no fucking sense because I'm talking about how surely the fest was run, not that it was about gay stuff. Yeah, it was just so ludicrous. Like, if you know any of what I have fought for, campaigned for, and worked for, or anything about me, because why would I be against equality for me? <laughs> no, like, right. Like, this just does <laughs> not just make so any stupid. It was so asinine, and I was just like, that's so stupid that I don't really have anything to say to that. This it's makes just... me think of uh, that really dumb conversation I had years ago. I was writing a Love Hina fan fiction, and somebody, uh, I, they just, uh, I guess, found my messenger, and they uh, emailed me, and like, yeah, I read your story, so you hate uh, What's-Her-Face as much as uh, I do, and I'm like, what gave you that impression? Just because I decided she wasn't the main love interest for my story? I don't know. And so I kind of talked with this person a few more times. <laughs> And they really had this huge hate on for uh, Naru, I think, is the main love interest in Love Hina. And, uh, <clears throat> and then one day, uh, I was talking to this person, because, you know, they were talking to me. And um, she was trying to say, how, like, again, how much she, like, like th this is all they ever wanted to talk about with me, is how much they hated this one character. <laughs> and how she how she never like changed or evolved or or she's like the only reason why she fell in love and married uh what's his face is because he came, became more like Seta, who she was already in love with. And I'm like, Well, the truth is a lot of the char uh there are several characters who became like other characters by the end of the story. And I named Kitsune and um Shinobu and uh, whatever the uh, uh, samurai chick uh, her name was and you know and I'm like and then you know the end of the book sets it up that there's going to maybe be hints of a lesbian relationship between Shinobu and the new girl that show you know shows up and joins the dormitory and this person immediately blocks me and I'm just like what uh. and then they <laughs> unblock me. And then they start accusing me of never having read the series at all, and then I'm a liar. <laughs> and and so then you and, messaged me, right, right. <laughs> I'm like, and, and this part, and I told, I'm like, look, you, I, I've read the books. I've not read all of them, which I told you this. I only have like one to three, and then like maybe five and seven. And then uh, maybe from 7 to 14, like, I don't yeah. have all of them, but I have, like, most of them. Because they're moms. Mom loved Love Hina. She thought they were funny. So, you know, I, I bought them for her when I could find them. And they just, like, they just got so pissed off and chewed me out. And, I, and then they blocked me again. And I'm just <laughs> like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I don't I mean, care. It's, it's, it's not like you've... You've actually contributed to my life in any meaningful or positive way, you know, and so, and so, so goodbye. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and so I got up from uh, my computer and I went over to the bookshelf and I looked at each of the Love Hina books that I had on the shelf that I still have, by the way, and recently reread. And I'm like, yeah, because I, I don't actually own these books. And I've never actually, you know, read them and neither has mom. <laughs> And I'm like, whatever, wasting my time. I don't even know why she messaged me, but apparently I didn't agree with their assessment of Naru. Which, yeah, <laughs> Naru is kind of an asshole, but I don't hate her. I mean, yeah. it, it's a, it's a, you know, it's just fan service story with comedy aspects. Yeah, yeah, with and and with back back with the 
preface, you know. Sorry, I, I had a point there, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> no, well, it it was it was people being stupid and and making accusations oh, out okay, of the blue yeah. when they don't really <laughs> understand. And and tying it back in with the Pride Fest, you know, it's it's so hurtful to the entire community, the entire cause, even the larger community, when you have things like this, because like. It makes people, I mean, they have one really bad experience like this, and they, and it's very easy for them to think, well, this is how it is. You know, this yeah. is how that community is. And it's very easy for them to, you know, apply that to the, to the larger community. And it may be wrong, but, I mean, it would have been so easy for us if we had not already been, <laughs> I mean, like, if we had not already been a part of that, that community in yeah. any way, that, you know, to just assume that that's how it was. <laughs> But, like, it's also really problematic that the way that they reacted by telling me that I hate equality, which was fucking hilarious, that's basically just, that's so revolting to me because it's basically trying to say, I have this one social label and if anybody questions me or criticizes me, they're obviously discriminating against that label. Like they obviously hate me because I am I'm gay or or whatever, you know. Like you can do it with anything. You can do it with with uh, just about any social label. You can say, oh well, you know, they hate me because I'm gay. They hate me because I'm uh, I don't know Irish. They <laughs> they hate me because I'm a woman. You know, and and sometimes it's true. I mean, sometimes it is true that people will pick out a singular social label and really you know ride your ass because of it. In this case, however, it is the case of someone being a completely irredeemable asshole and using that as a basically a get out of jail free card from Monopoly. You know, like they never have to work on any aspect of their personality. They never have to think that they're in the wrong or that they've made any mistakes or done anything improper because they can just say, oh, well, obviously you hate equality. Yeah, because I don't have any sort of stake in equality. I mean, it's a ludicrous thing, but it really reflects extremely poorly on this person. If if you do that, you know, you just, I just, I really cannot stand it when people use that as basically that, that card, you know, like you, you can get out of anything. You never have to work on any aspect of your personality. Anything you do, you know, even if you are basically shitting all over it and have the organizational skills of, I don't know, a week old dead body. <laughs> I mean, Necrophilia. you never have to... <laughs> what? I oh. said Because <laughs> I'm like, well, that's probably what they're doing while, while they're you know telling you you're not for equality. You <laughs> racist homophobe, you. <laughs> yeah. Because, yes, the gay guy on the show is so homophobic. Let me <laughs> yeah. tell you. I mean, it can happen, but uh, well, someone yeah. with its, someone with a career that has been basically all about like equality, inclusiveness, you know, anti-censorship, all this stuff, yeah, because you know, you, you, that sort of person would totally hate equality. But it just, it, and it's really, it's really distressing to me to see someone who is so convinced of that they could never possibly be wrong or make a mistake or anything like that. And instead, it must be, and see, if, if it were anyone else, I mean, they, they may have been very hurt by that accusation, because there are a lot of people out there that will accuse people of something like that, and it will be very hurtful to them, because maybe they're not a part of that social group or something, yeah. or maybe it, actually, maybe it actually really affects them, maybe it actually, Which you know... Which I can actually step in and say... Uh... I'm not going to get into the whole whole situation that led up to this, but there was a different scenario in which I was talking about uh, transgender people. And somebody actually said to me, and you can probably find it somewhere, because remember, I'm not exactly the most elegantly spoken. You know, sometimes I say things, yeah. and that's not how I mean things. But it is how I mean things, but not in the way that most people are going to interpret that way. Yeah. And so instead of asking for clarification, this person just automatically assumed 
And again, I admit I'm not always well-spoken. But they actually told me that I'm the kind of person who make, who make other people commit suicide. That's horrible. It and that's is. inexcusable. There's no excuse for that. And I just kind of sat there like, wow, you're an asshole and you know nothing about me. Yeah. And anybody who does know anything about me would know my personal history with things like depression and all that. And would know that I would never, ever support telling somebody that they should go kill themselves because they're transgendered or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. I don't even know how we got from point A to point B. That doesn't make any sense. And that's the same thing that happened to Hushicho with this Pride Fest bullcrap. Yeah, it's, and, it, and it's so, it's, it's bizarrely frequent. Like, you see a lot of people... And, and it's especially people that have these positions of influence or something, or they have just a little bit of power over someone else. And it, it's so often that. It's so often that, or they want it, you know. So they try and do these things that are just unspeakably, unspeakably rude or wrong, but they can never be blamed. They can never, they, they never take it no, upon themselves it's to say, your fault, not theirs. yeah, it's always. And, you know, I, and I understand, like, sometimes... The people, uh, in, in fact, sometimes, you know, people that come to you and, and uh, may critique something you're doing, yeah, sometimes you tell them to fuck off. Sometimes you just, you know, you don't want to deal with them. But when you're doing something like a pride fest or when you're doing something like, you know, like when a convention. When you're taking some, people's money, especially. Yeah, exactly. Like when you're taking people's money, they have a, a reasonable expectation of you doing this in a professional way, in you providing something for that money, unless it's just completely understood that you're not going to get anything for it. And like, yeah, I, I gave an equivalent. I gave a monetary equivalent, but that still counts. I mean, that is still it. I also yeah. gave of my time and put in personal appearances before the event and to help I, promote the event. I didn't even have to go. I went because Ushito asked me to. He wanted some help, and I'm like, sure, yeah. I'm not doing anything on a Saturday. Yeah, I mean, the the whole thing is just is very distressing because, like, I know, I know that sometimes people can can deal with others in a way that you know seems brusque or, or even rude. You know, sometimes people can have disagreements. Sometimes people can have problems with each other but this pride fest was a horrible clusterfuck i will never go to another one again uh, I, I mean unless it is just really just an exception unless just something really drastically changes and it really changed a lot of the way we do things i mean like even after that even though i was you know kind of tuning back my appearances mm -hmm. i was like okay no more pride fests no more outdoor shows ever you know, we had we had a bunch of rules that we were that we had established. It was a lot like when we did My Inner Life, you know, yeah. on Bad Fin Picture Theatre. You know, after that we were like, okay, no more stories of a certain length, you know, no more of this content, no more of that content. Well it, it just it just boiled down to that seemed like a good idea. Yeah. And then it turns out we sorely underestimated what it would take yeah. and then we just got bitch slept for it when we really shouldn't have. Yeah. And I did everything I could to make people aware of, you know, what they had done and why this was unacceptable. Yeah, and we both it's did. Their, yeah, I mean, it's it's anybody's decision if they want to support it anyway. But I will not only never support this local fest again, I have really avoided the people that, uh, that I, the businesses that I know were there. And, you know, and I know... I know even some people don't even like Pride Fest at all because, uh, you know, so often it turns into basically corporate co-opting of sexual identity mm -hmm. to turn to profit. And I think, honestly, that is pretty much more or less exactly what these people were doing. I mean, they were basically just trying to turn a profit and, and build themselves up and make themselves much more important in the local scene. I guess they figured it would help them get laid or, or you know, I don't want to be like laid that. by anybody who went to Pride Fest. <laughs> yes, that, that's... That, yeah. that is not the cream of the crop. I'm, I'm not looking for a date there, and I'm not even 
homosexual. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it was it was just very bad, and I'm I I'm mean, really that, sorry that to say this. That one waiter but... guy in that one restaurant was kind of hot, but uh, he never <laughs> looked in our direction. So yeah, yeah, we were just admiring from afar, and he was just working at the. It was like a little anyway. cafe or something there. Yeah. I don't know what was in front of us, but uh, I know they had like uh, waiter kind of like outfits, and he would come out there sometimes to attend to the people who were sitting outside, and I'm just like, I like you. Please look at me. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty much our only joy that day was uh, watching the waiter dude. But but yeah, I mean we just just I just wanted to. And I, I think it's good that we do this talk time because I do have people who will ask me, you know, when I when I talk about the shame fest of a, a few years ago, or I, or we talk about, you know, how much we hated Pride Fest. It's not that we hate, you know, gay pride or, or GLBTQ pride or whatever. It's not that we hate any sort of uh, any sort of pride, you know, yeah, any I, sort of. I, I, I was together. telling Ushcha earlier that uh, since we had brought it up on Twitter and we were talking about it. I was telling him, I'm like, you know, I was, I thought to myself, and then I realized, like, how out of context bad this would sound for somebody who didn't know what I was talking about. And I'm like, those Pride Fest fuckers, those gay fuckers, I hate them. <laughs> and I'm like, um, um, not like that, no, not, not actual gay people who have nothing to do with that show, just that show. I'm like, it makes me sound like one of those asshole Christians. And anybody who knows me knows I'm not like that. Yeah, it's, well, and, and as we were saying earlier, I think it is it is really imperative that people that are a, like a legitimate part of the community that are, you know, that do legitimately bear this social label and need to need to stand up against misrepresentation or poor representation. You know, if someone is being a giant dick and making a huge shit show out of something that should be, you know, encouraging and supporting the community, you need to put your foot down and say, look, this is shit. This this person does not represent us. This person is not working for us. It's exactly the same as when you get these, you know, nut jobs out there who call themselves, you know... It, and it doesn't matter what they call themselves. They can call themselves. Uh, they can call themselves gay. They can call themselves they can call Christian. Themselves they can call high themselves high and mighty because that's what they yeah. think they are. Yeah, I mean, and and that's. But see, it, I mean, it's just like all this, you know, like sexual orientation, uh, you know, religion, you feminism, all these things. They don't really have a gatekeeper. You cannot really, you can't really just point at someone and say, "Well, you're not really a," because they can just claim they are and. While it may not be true, and while they may be completely misappropriating the, the term and the group and everything, even if people that know better don't believe them, they're still using that label and they're still making a spectacle of themselves. So people that don't know any better will see that and identify that shit with you because you're a part of that group too. And that is the worst thing ever. So I really think it's imperative that when when bad things happen like this, when bad experiences happen like this, that people communicate, that people say, look, this is what happened. I did not agree to it. I did not agree with it. This was not, I was not a part of this. I do not support this. This does not represent me. These people do not represent me. They are not acting for the benefit of anyone but themselves. And that is the worst thing. And especially when, you know, you want to go to them and say, you need to shape this up for the good of everyone because this was unacceptable. And they tell you you hate equality? Bullshit. You are an idiot. You know, you were like, those words should not have been allowed. And it wasn't even like it was something they said in person. They actually composed an email. So, like, they had the opportunity to read that over again and think, that sounds dumb as shit. And they didn't. They sent the email. And I thought, hey, th this perfectly <laughs> composes what we think of your comment. Yeah. It makes no fucking sense, but we're going to send it to you and tell you to kiss her ass because we yeah. don't care. It's just like, <laughs> it really says a lot that they really had the opportunity. They had the opportunity 
and and they they apparently thought that it was completely logical and reasonable and that just that really more than anything else that should tell you exactly how stupid and incompetent these people are but even though i laugh about it it also still makes me a little bit sad and, and rather angry that well yeah it was a bunch of crap that should have never happened and and then they blamed us for it yeah specifically they... you because you're the one who's the more outspoken of us yeah and and like really it's it's just so distressing because they pondered off on me they pondered off on the other people that were there that had you know been treated the same way they pondered off on the companies that had that had pitched in you know and been treated the same way this is not their problem it's your show it is your problem you know if you are going to sit back and rake in the praise and the kudos and all this other shit from organizing this actually organize it you know don't just try and pull something out of your ass and treat everybody like shit and then run around like a chicken with your head cut off the day of yeah i mean nothing <laughs> at any convention or show or whatever is going to go perfectly but you can't just sit there and pretend there aren't any problems especially yeah. when, when there are huge fucking problems and especially when someone brings it up to you. you you don't wait until someone brings something up to you that you know was wrong because these assholes were there and knew it was wrong. Oh, they didn't and then give a say, shit. They didn't give a shit and then say, oh, you hate equality. That's not an answer. That's not an answer. That's not even that is logical. Not, it's, it isn't. It's, it's not logical. And it is not an answer. It, is, I mean, it does not address there, there anything. There was nowhere we went and said, fuck you guys for being gay and equal pro-equality. These yeah, guys like, were pro-anything except being dicks. Yeah, these... These people were pro chuckle fucks. That's pretty much it. And to say something like "Oh, you hate equality" is about as stupid and irrelevant. Like, even if we did hate equality, even if we were like actively working against equality somehow, for some reason that we thought for was some really reason. important. <laughs> yeah, for some reason that does not invalidate the fact that all of the criticisms. And all of the things we pointed out, like I didn't even, I didn't even make it into an attack. I told them exactly what had happened, why this was a problem, and that they really should fix that because it was being a bad representation of the community. And as a pride fest, it was not working because of these problems. To tell me that I hate equality is just—it's a stupid tactic to try and demonize me so that people will think I'm wrong somehow. Because I somehow aid equality. Even if I did, that does not erase the problems with your festival. Because it's a carnival of... It's a shit show, you know? It's a it carnival a of incompetence. Fest. It is a shit fest. It's a shame fest. It's just... Uh, it, it is just really no way to run anything. And if you're running it some way like that and, and treating people like that, then you're not going to run it successfully for long. I don't know. I just that was I, I legitimately regard that as the worst show experience that I have ever had. Yeah, because... I, I even got home and I I was telling mom and, I'm, and I was telling my brother, I'm like that that was so not worth going because mom wanted to know because she's like you know because I told her I'm like I'm gonna be gone and out all day. I'll be with his show. I'll probably be back. I don't know, something like maybe midnight or something. Uh, I think he said it closed at 10 or something, so we'll probably be out that long. She's like, okay. Well, of course, when I got back, she's like, well, how did it go? And I'm like, it didn't go anywhere. That was that was the worst idea we've ever had. Yeah, and it, yeah. well, we got, we got back so early, too. Yeah, well, we left at 7 because we were going to try and stay for as long as possible. And then it was so bad. And so then we're like, well, maybe we should just pack up and leave. But you're, but then you're like, well, I kind of want to try to make as much money as possible. So here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll try and give away so many, uh, the rest of the business cards and or uh, try to make the table money back. And yeah. whichever comes first, then we'll just say, fuck it, pack everything up and go. And I think, it, and then seven o'clock rolled around, and we just looked at each other. We're like, you know what? Screw that. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we were we were there for a few hours, and it was just like, eh, no. So then we, uh, 
they I don't know who picked the music for this crappy thing, but it had like one of those I don't know what was with the music, but it, you know, it's one of those things where you think it's okay at first, but then it keeps <laughs> going. And it just keeps getting on your nerves a little more, a little more, and a little more as time goes on. Well, you know, and then I had a splitting headache. I felt so bad. It was so loud. And it wasn't even like a good sound system. And no. I think that's what made the, made the problem because it was just loud. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, handled well. It was just blaring. And, you know, like they even played some stuff that I legitimately liked. But I didn't like the way they played it because they played it too loud, so you couldn't really appreciate it because it was just like... Yeah, it was super, everything was super distorted. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, there was that woman screaming about her vagina the whole time. Period! So, uh... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Period! I'm like, fucking shut up, you asshole. I'd go up there and beat you with that fucking mic if I could. <laughs> Damn, I need some earplugs and aspirin. It was so annoying. It was it was ridiculous too. It was like it was it was like a bad cartoon of everything that you that you imagine. Like every stupid thing someone has said about about the gay community. It was there. Yeah. <laughs> it was there. Like this is dead. and that's that's another part that really, you know, disturbed me. Like I I'm I'm all for a broad representation of all parts of, of the community, all the people that, but it seemed like all they got were like caricatures and assholes. And it wasn't like the good kind of caricature because you can get an archetype that is really good, but apparently any of the people that had half a brain knew to stay the fuck away from this thing because, oh my God, it was hilariously awful. It would have been funnier if we hadn't, you know, been in it. Yeah. But I mean, we can look back and sort of chuckle, but oh my god, it was god awful. It was dinner it was, was good. Dinner was good because we were not only not at that fucking festival anymore. But we were yeah, we It was his was, first was, time was, at the um what is that place called? The, just the Asian buffet, I think. Next to Walmart. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it's called either. I, th I think it's, it's just uh, the Asian buffet. But it is like the best Asian place around here. And yeah. it also has a hibachi, which his show was really, really happy about. Yeah, I love the hibachi because you can just choose whatever you want and have them cook it exactly how you want. And yeah, it, it was really nice. They, I, I'm, I still do miss Far East Buffet, but Far East Buffet how it used to be. Yeah. You know how it, uh, how it, how it was. It was awful when me and Mom and Kelvin went there the last time. That was, that was awful. Peking is still okay, but. Um... <coughs> They're not. Yeah, I, I. You know, I, I, once you go to Asian buffet, nothing will taste as good ever. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I really do like that uh, that buffet, but yeah. So, so the best part of our entire Pride Fest Saturday was we went to dinner, eating at the. Yeah, it was it was leaving leaving the fucking Pride Fest and going to where Cassie lives and going to dinner. So yeah, I was I. I really, I really, in in some ways I regret going, but in some ways I am kind of glad that I did go because at least now we could tell people to avoid it like the plague. <laughs> yeah, and at least we learned something from it, because unlike those idiots that you know probably never have improved at all because they think that anybody that questions them apparently hates equality, we actually learned from our mistakes and. We didn't make it again. We didn't go back to the Pride Fest, and we have warned people away from the Pride Fest. So, hopefully, this talk time has helped people to understand. Yes. We don't hate on Pride Fest <laughs> in general, but we really hate on the one that's local because it was god awful. It was abusive. Yes. The people in charge were absolutely ridiculously incompetent and malicious, and the whole thing was just a disaster. You know, I it sounds to me more like it was the opposite. It wasn't us who hated equality. It was them. Yeah, I pretty much think so. I, I mean, I'm like, I, that just they, now occurred to me, and I'm like, the opposite is true. Yeah, yeah, it it really is, and that's that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the irony of it because they they really just they don't understand why they are being harmful why that sort of behavior is toxic and 
if it were just a stupid comic book convention or something, you know, yeah, I kind of like see it. Yeah, a small time thing, and we were yeah. like, well, that was stupid. Let's never go here again. Yeah, but, but this when is you it. are... This is supposed to be, like, what? The, the biggest fe Pride Fest or Pride sh whatever in Tennessee, or at least the East part. I don't, I don't know. It I mean, Knoxville's that, a pretty uh, fucking big city over here, so you would think they would try harder to make this thing successful. Yeah, but either way, I mean, I didn't, uh, honestly, I, I wasn't that impressed by it. I didn't think it was that big or major. No, I mean, if that's the it biggest one. It was just like one, that little area, and I'm like, yeah. really, I expected more. Yeah, and, but I mean, when you are taking it upon yourself to represent a, a social group, especially a, especially an often discriminated against social group, and you're taking it upon yourself to represent this group and unify this group and say, here we are, you know, we are proud. This is, we are coming together and showing you why we are proud and why you should admire our, our unity. They didn't do any of that. Mm. They were divisive. Mm. They were hostile. They were hateful. They were toxic. They showed only the worst aspects of, of uh, everything. Mm. They showed the worst aspects of people. Yeah. And to, to say... To, to have this position where they dared to represent anyone, regardless of, of social label or, or status or whatever, is is heinous and unforgivable. I mean, when you when like like we said, you know, if it were just a little comic book convention, you know, a little pissant convention, we didn't like it, we'll just leave and say, well, whatever. But when you're doing a pride fest or anything like that, you don't do that. And it is important that people stand up and say, you are not allowed to represent me. You are not allowed to claim that you represent this group because that is not okay. And we are not like that. We do not accept that. These people do not represent us. It's exactly the same with everything. Just like we were saying, you know, there's no gatekeepers in a lot of these things like, you know, religion or orientation or whatever, you know, social calls groups. People can claim whatever they want, and, you know, it's not like you have, the, like, a signed certificate saying, you know, this dude is a gay homosexual, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever, you know, like, this 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 person is... Uh, this is, is my certif certificate of authenticity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you don't have a certificate of authenticity for, for most things. Most people can just claim whatever the fuck they want. But that's why it's more important than than ever... When people do things like this, you've got to say, no, you don't. You've got to say, yeah, but no. Pull a selbe on them. Say, yeah, but no. Because it is awful. It, it is actually very harmful to the community, to the cause, to the identity, to the orientation, to all of these things. And that's why, well, ever since then, we've, we've done our best to make sure that people know and that they don't make the same mistake. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully hopefully this has let people know. And, and if there's anyone in, in that area, then please avoid the fucking thing. And if you're a celebrity who is somehow secretly listening to our, <laughs> to our podcast and, you spread know. Spread the word that people should spread avoid the word. shit like the plague. Thank yeah. you. Yes, thank you very much.